Hello, my name is Ellen Williams and I'm a second year undergraduate student at the University of Oxford studying biological sciences. This summer I completed a remote internship with the Preston Lab at the University of Oxford researching into the biotic threats to quinoa cultivation and it was funded by the BSPP. In light of climate change and growing populations worldwide, as well as improving nutrient and water use efficiency to improve food security, it is crucial crops are protected from diseases. Chenopodium quinoa or quinoa is exceptionally nutritious and a delicious food source whose cultivation for food security is attracting increasing international attention, especially since the United Nations General Assembly declared 2013 as the International Year of Quinoa. In fact, the nutritional value of quinoa meets and surpasses recommendations by the World Health Organization. The sustainable production methods of quinoa by indigenous Andean people has meant quinoa has been preserved in its natural state as a food for present and future. The quinoa germplasm harbours vast genetic diversity, allowing farmers to maintain productivity on poor soil under drought and high salinity, conditions predicted to become more prevalent worldwide with climate change. However, the expansion of quinoa cultivation to other areas, including the UK, brings with it an extension of the spectrum and number of attacks by pests and diseases. Most common and well described is downy mildew, but even for this there is a distinct lack of information regarding its epidemiology. Similarly, there is a lack of information regarding other biotic threats chemo is susceptible to, including pathogens, pests and weeds, from seedling damping off and leaf spot to susceptibility to moth, insect and bird attacks. I began investigations into this. I completed a comprehensive literature review of the biotic threats to chemo cultivation worldwide, developing skills such as distilling and organising information, whilst creating a contact database of scientific and academic researchers, growers, breeders and farmers to query for further insights. By then condensing information into reports, I was able to highlight what further key knowledge requirements were needed and create personalised questionnaires for the contacts in my database. I then sent them out and set up video and telephone interviews over Microsoft Teams with quinoa researchers and growers from Argentina, Bolivia, Peru, USA, Netherlands, Denmark and the UK to collect the latest knowledge advancements and find out more information about the specific studies they had conducted. With this information I created 11 information sheets on specific biotic threats which will be available to download from the internet and can be taken into the field so that people can use them as educational tools as well as identification guides for surveying symptoms and problems in their fields. This project was particularly exciting in part because I was still able to gain insight and experience into careers in science and research during the COVID-19 lockdown period. Also I was able to collaborate and connect with people from all over the globe. When reviewing the literature, I could use and improve my basic Spanish skills so that by the time the Virtual Quinoa 2020 Symposium came about, I could understand a lot more of the Spanish language speakers than I previously would have been able to. I really enjoyed exploring an area in plant sciences and pathology which has not yet received very much attention at all. It was also therefore very satisfying to feel as though I was significantly contributing to knowledge advancements in quinoa disease research. I'd like to thank the BSPP for providing the funding for this project, my supervisors Professor Gail Preston and PhD student Florence Grafton for providing me with this opportunity and all the collaborators who were able to complete questionnaires and meet to discuss biotic threats to chemo with me.